Hi everyone, welcome back. This is a continuation of our discussion from the last tutorial, so I definitely recommend you to go back and watch it if you haven't done that. And in this tutorial, let's uh, extend our knowledge, our understanding of uh, this deep learning based edge detection, HED, into again detecting edges, but then well, let's combine that with our existing knowledge, hopefully, about connected components to take this edge detected image into an actual object segmentation so you can extract all the, uh, for example, morphological parameters, like what is the size distribution, what is the diameter area, and so on. So that's the goal, and I'll go through the entire exercise. And again, do not forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And uh, also, while you're there, find the thanks button right next to it because I know most of you are generous, so go ahead and click on that button. Okay, getting back to our uh, topic right now, uh, again, a quick crash course in case you missed the previous tutorial. HED stands for Holistically Nested Edge Detection. And what does it do? It uh, looks at uh, the side outputs from a network, in this example, VGG16 network, and uh, it combines all of these or fuses all of these. In this example, again, there are five different inputs or sorry, five different side outputs that it's fusing to actually getting us the end result. And the end result is our edge detection. Go ahead and read the paper to get more information. But uh, let me just uh, flash a couple of screens. Why are we focused on this one? Because uh, as of today, like sometime in October 2022, this seems to be the state of the art for edge detection, which gives us the not only the best accuracy, but also in a very fast uh, time. And how do we use it? Well, if you want to look at the entire code, you can go to the GitHub page, but uh, I am going to use OpenCV. My version is 4.5, I believe, but any, any, any OpenCV after 3.4.3, .3, you're good to go. And a couple other notes, uh, you need two files to import the pre-trained model. This is a based on CAFE framework, not uh, Keras or TensorFlow or PyTorch. So there are two things. One, the proto text file, which is nothing but a JSON file that defines the model. And the other one is the actual network weights. So you need to load both of these. And once you have that, then we are going to follow step-by-step -step approach in terms of uh, reading the image, creating a blob. A blob is nothing but pre-processing and uh, uh, detect detecting the edges. And once the edges are detected, this is the new part uh, that I'm gonna include as part of this video, which is uh, get the image ready for connected components, run the connected components itself, all available in, in OpenCV, by the way. And of course, optionally draw the markers because we like to see things on the screen and uh, filter the small objects and spit out the report. So that's the plan. And we ended the last tutorial by looking at this image on the left hand side where the image has been shifted to the bottom right. You see how you have this dark, like this not dark, but this blurred space. And that is because the network itself, the way it's implemented, at least the way it's available in OpenCV, it doesn't have the crop layer add it to it, we need to add a crop layer so it actually does the cropping in the right way. And I borrowed that crop layer code from my Google search of, you know, uh, GitHub or uh, numerous other sources. And anyway, I have a snippet of code that actually works great. And I'm gonna share everything with you when I share my, uh, my file anyway. Okay, let's jump into the code and continue the discussion. Okay, now we are at the code and uh, all the relevant information up here with what I'm going to do as part of this uh, as part of this uh, uh, code right here. Okay, let us start by importing the libraries again. As I mentioned in the last video, there are only three libraries: OpenCV, Matplotlib for plotting, NumPy. That's it for data handling. And once we are done with these three, now comes this crop layer. Again, go through this line by line if you are curious about it. All it's doing is uh, you're looking at the coordinates of the crop and then you're updating them and then you're actually applying the crop right there uh, during the feed forward process. Okay, so that's what the crop layer is doing. So let's go ahead and define the class for this crop layer and now we need to insert this or once we define the network, we need to update the network by adding this new crop layer. And I'll show you, well, it's just a single line anyway. Okay, and this part, we covered this in our last tutorial, which is, okay, this is where I stored my proto 
path and also the model path. I downloaded both from up here, right? I mean, I provided the links and also look at the description if you want the links. And once I define the path, I mean, these are on my local directory, I downloaded them. I am going to define my network as cv2.dnn, OpenCV has deep neural networks. It's not like TensorFlow or uh, a PyTorch, but it makes some of these readily available just like this one so we can get our task done again. Okay, we are not in the process of uh, inventing new neural network, at least in these videos, we are in the process of using something that someone already published and then uh, using it in achieving a specific task, which is object segmentation in this case. Okay, so as part of cv2.dnn, uh, I'm using read net from cafe, which takes two arguments. One is the path to your actual network and the other one is model weights. So let's go ahead and update that. So that's our net network. Now the network is loaded with pre-trained weights. Now, we are going to register the layer that we just defined, the crop layer that we defined up here. And it's as easy as DNN underscore register layer. And I'm labeling that layer as crop and that's the crop layer. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that line. So it is registering the crop layer. It's taking more than normal amount of time. Oh, the kernel crashed. Let's see. Let's try this one more time. No idea why. Uh, maybe because I was doing something else. Uh, uh, yeah, let's the kernel restarted. So let's try this one more time. So uh, uh, let's come back here. Uh, let us make sure the present working directory is updated. I you have these stupid cheap tricks that I do to update uh, because I'm lazy. Anyway to update the working directory. Okay, so let's come all the way down here and register the layer. So yeah, there you go. It shouldn't take that long. I have no clue why it crashed the last time, but obviously it's working fine. Because I was doing something else, I have no clue what, uh, don't wanna investigate that. Okay, so what, did, uh, what do we have right now? We have a network with pre-trained weights and the updated network with uh, the new crop layer added. So we should be all good. And now let's go ahead and start reading the images. I mean, we have one image right there, pebbles. And let's go ahead and look at this image. So this is how the image looks like. And I am extracting the height and width of this image because when I do blob or pre-processing, I need that size parameter right there. Okay, so mean pixel values, you, uh, okay. I need to go a bit slow in case you haven't watched the previous tutorial. Uh, blob uh, from image is basically, think of this as pre-processing. It's creating a blob, which is basically pre-processing. And how is it pre-processing? It's pre-processing by doing two things, by scaling the image and also by uh, performing mean subtraction, which means we need to calculate the mean or you need to know what the mean approximate values are so you can enter them down here. I did initially calculate the mean and added the values and then I modified it a little bit to get the desired result I'm looking for on the screen. So that's why you see the mean values here to be hard coded. So I don't need to run this line, but let's go ahead and run it for the fun of it. And now let's do uh, the blob from image stuff. So it requires your raw image. Scale factor, again, this is something that you can change, you need to change to make sure that you're getting the desired result when you are doing edge detection. So the two things that you need to play with are scale factor and mean, okay? So let's run this blob. So it creates a blob of our image, which is basically a, a pre-processed image. And if you wanna see how that looks like, it looks like this. Yeah, so this is our original image and this is the blob right there. Uh, sorry, I mean blob, but this is basically the pre-processed image, okay? Original pre-processed image. We did this in the last uh, video, but uh, the best part, I mean, you will see that uh, the crop layer actually doing its magic now. So when we run these, uh, well, let's not run all in case you haven't watched the previous tutorial. First, let's set the input to our network as blob. So that's what I'm doing at this stage. And if you look at the variable explorer, the blah, the network, the net is a DNN net. And now let us uh, feed forward, just go through this uh, network in the forward. Now you will see your HED, 
that was pretty fast, right? It, it, it did edge detection right away. So even on a large image, like almost 1K by 1K. So the HED, the output is an array of one by one by 826 by 1119. So we just need these two. So let's go ahead and extract the required uh, dimensions. And uh, these numbers are all floating point numbers between zero to one. So I'm multiplying that with 255 to, and converting the uh, them to unsigned integer eight. So we can do our plotting and all that stuff. Okay, so first, because I said plotting, let's go ahead and plot it. And if I go to plots, now you see how edges are taken care of. If you don't have that uh, layer, the crop layer, then you saw how uh, the entire image is moved to the bottom right. Yeah, so that's the magic of this crop layer. So that's exactly why we need to use it. Okay, so now we know that, okay, if you go back to the original image, this back and forth, that is perfect. Look how that's an amazing job for edge detection. I'm, I'm still amazed at how good it is. Go ahead and play with the scale factor and the mean just to see how things change, but I am super happy with where we are. Now the connected component part. Again, the traditional uh, Python people who are watching this, you probably know what I'm going to do, right? I mean, we are going to, uh, in this case, uh, let's go ahead and blur it and threshold it a little bit, okay? so. Uh, you can try without blurring, but again, these are the typical steps I follow before connected components. And uh, it's always, again, you have to go back and see how good the results are. So I applied the threshold and I'm just inverting the image and then applying the Otsu threshold. So it's just a automa automatic threshold based on Otsu. Uh, let's look at uh, the thresholded image now. So that is very good. So this is our input image. This is the thresholded image. Isn't that great? Yeah, that is amazing. So now that you have a thresholded image, let's go ahead and apply the connected component. And I'm using the connected component uh, with stats. So even the stats can be extracted. So I can use the area and all that to filter uh, the image, for example, yeah? So when you do connected components with stats, it's going to give you four outputs, number of labels, the labels itself, stats of each of these objects, and the centroids of each detected object, all relevant information that we need. So let's go ahead and apply the connected components right there. And can you see the right hand side? And the connectivity equals to four. Again, you can play with all the parameters to see how it works for your own images. So let's go ahead and run it. And when I go to variable explorer, now you can see, where is it? Number of labels, 306. So we found 306 individual objects and uh, the labels itself is an array right there you can see that's an ndra object and the stats stats where is it the stats right there we have 306 objects and five right there yeah one two three four five five different uh, uh stats again this is not a pandas uh, uh data frame or anything so you don't have like the uh, titles but you can look at the documentation to see which one is what so one of those definitely is area i know one is probably equivalent diameter. I have no clue uh, what a couple of those are. I don't remember off top of my head, but we can go back to the documentation and check what they are. Uh, uh, okay, so the next uh, thing is let's just, I mean, we have everything that we need. We just uh, need to visualize a couple of things. So here I'm going to create a false color image with black background and colored objects. So let's go ahead and uh, get some false colors and show the image because it's pretty <laughs> there you go so you have your input image and you have your segmented image right there now you can do a few more things right i mean you can actually obtain the centroids because we also have centroids as part of our stats so the centroid and you can actually put a plus mark or a cross mark or add the centroid of each of these objects that's exactly what this part is doing so let's go ahead and do that uh, i hope you can see that there is uh, the cross mark right there. Okay, now uh, because we already have area, right? So one of these, the last one actually in the stats is area. So if I go back to uh, the stats right there, the last one is the area, I believe. Yeah, uh, the last one is the area. And uh, let's go ahead and filter the area. So minimum area, you can set it as 50. And I'm just saying, okay, for I and centroid, and look at these, if the area is greater than, area is basically stats, you see how it's the fourth one or fifth one right there. Uh, look at that number, if it's greater than that 
go ahead and draw the marker. So this is basically uh, how we are filtering for visualization purposes. And again, you can go ahead and plot all. Uh, you can go ahead and plot all right there. Okay, so very nice. Uh, this is how we started off with, and we got like nice uh, edge detection. And the key to getting the best segmentation here is getting the best edge detection done. And there is no way you can do that with canny edge detection or anything else. This is the best one I have uh, literally, I've, I've tried many on this image. And uh, again, you can do that. I provided code from our last tutorial with canny, but you can also do Robert, Sobel, and a whole bunch of other edge detectors. Uh, but uh, this 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 is super amazing. Okay, uh, I am more comfortable. I mean, when it comes to extracting all the parameters instead of using stats from here, once I all I have the the uh, labeled image, I can I can alternatively use this region props from uh, Scikit Image to extract the numbers. This is what I always do. That's why I'm just showing you the regular viewers the the comfort zone, bringing you back to the comfort zone here. So from scikit image, go import the measure module. And within measure, we are going to use region props table. And uh, from region pro props, you can get a whole bunch of region properties. I am going to get area, equivalent diameter, mean intensity, and solidity, which tells me how rounded the objects are. So let's go ahead and do that. And I am going to capture all of that into a pandas data frame. So now if I open the data frame, uh, okay, where is it? Right there. You should see my label, area, equivalent diameter, solidity, and all that kind of stuff. Now you can basically filter objects based on solidity, for example, show everything above 0 0.95, meaning all the rounded ones. Uh, we can also do by area, just like we have done before. So we can just say df area greater than 50, and also less than 10,000 because you don't want the extreme large ones, so less than 10,000. And just go ahead and print your data frame, and there you go, data frame. So here is an entire project for you, right? So we, you can, you could have used uh, deep learning. If you could have used mask or CNN, in fact, for this image, mask or CNN works great. You can just go here and annotate each object right there, annotate, um, and you need a few other images, right? Not just one image take like tens of these images, annotate a whole bunch of images, and uh, use mask or CNN for object detection. That's one way. But uh, this is a pre-trained model right there uh, for edge detection. We detected the edges, we segmented the image, thresholded the image, and then we converted that into a labeled image, extracted the param uh, region properties. Go ahead and try this uh, for uh, different types of rocks. You know, for mining industry, for example, you grind the rocks and you have a whole bunch of uh, rocks lying around and you need to, you, you're given a task of finding what the, what's the average uh, size of these rocks. This is a great, uh, great way of doing it. Also for bio pharma examples, anytime you have a cluster of particles, go ahead and try this and see. Let us know, let me know specifically via the comments how it worked out for your own images. Okay, guys, thank you very much. And again, do not forget to subscribe and hit the thanks buttons. See you in a couple of weeks again.